Welcome to Pinball Mayhem. My name is Jeremy, and uh, in the last video I was introducing phase two, and now we're going to start working on this mess over here. What I've done so far is I have pulled out, let me reach down here, all the bits for the other uh, strike spare units. They're all the same, all six. And this one, unfortunately, was the worst. This is the one that was uh, sitting horizontal here, up over here somewhere. And the mice decided to make a little house on it and uh, chew on a couple wires, which I'm not too happy about. But considering I've only got a couple inches of insulation missing on the wires, nothing was shorting against each other. Uh, I doubt it was being played while that happened, you know, um, or after that happened, I should say. Uh, Going to be a pretty easy repair. And uh, I got some spare cloth-covered wire to make it look a little nicer than just your modern-day insulation stuff. And um, since I was able to pull all these brackets off, uh, got other ones here. As you can see, these aren't nearly nearly as bad. They look quite nice. But um, those will be easier to clean. But the reason I pulled all these other ones off is the way these are situated in here, they're really hard to work on. They were probably one of the first things that was installed in on this backboard assembly. I can't be sure of that, but... Um, like the spare unit, uh, game selection, stuff below it, I actually had to pull those down, unbolt them, just to get at the bottom screw here where this uh, switch holds on, because to get yourself enough space to get at the other screws, you got to take this off first. But uh, we'll go into that, because I left one up, just to show you guys how to take it apart, and uh, we'll go from there. I'll just move the camera. Sorry about the angle. This isn't the best... Um, way to show you what's going on here. Pull this out of the way a little bit. But, uh, do what we can, right? Alright. Now, the first thing I want to do is move this switch here. Get some more light in this area. Things are banging around. Be fun to work in here. Alright. So it's uh, two flat blades here, or <laughs> flat blades, yeah, right. Two flat head screws that are underneath here. And you want to, they're on there pretty darn tight. So you want to make sure you can get on it square. So you don't wreck any screws. I wrecked one screw already, but it should tighten back up okay. And these screws are threaded directly into the frame of the strike spare unit. So you don't have to worry about any loose fasteners, just the screw itself. And there it went on the floor. I'll find it. But the thing you got to remember when you're taking these apart is if a screw gets lost, you really need to find it. Because you don't want to have any issues where one of these small screws here gets stuck in a relay or in the score motor. That'd be bad. Okay. That's off. So I'll move the camera here so you can see the other two fasteners. I'm going to take off a fastener here and a fastener here. It's just a uh, standard nut. Originally they had a some sort of a, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, um, lock washer. That's what it is. They originally have a lock washer behind them. Just a really small circular piece. And that's important not to let that get stuck in any sort of a, any sort of a relay or anything. Okay, we got it loose. I want to take that nut off first while it's still secured. I've got a long flat blade screwdriver. I'll move the camera a little more. Grab one of these other strike spare units. Here's another unit I've got. It's a little easier to show you what I'm going to do. On the 
gear here, there's a series of holes. I'm going to put my screwdriver in one of those holes and I'm going to jam it against this um, raised portion here to lock the wheel from spinning so I can remove that nut. Okay, it's a 7 16 nut. We'll just slide this guy in here. That ought to work nice. doesn't take much when you put it on you don't want to be a gorilla doing it move you back over here lights kind of a little dim over here and you got a nut and a heavy-duty lock washer Now the spider back here, we usually pop off. Just got to carefully grab it without bending the fingers. Sometimes you can push in on the, the gear shaft here. Sometimes it takes just a little careful prying just to wiggle it loose. Because this thing's never been off since 1962, I don't believe. There we go. And here's the fingers. Got a yellow mark there. Got my handy dandy head held light here. And there is the back of the strike spare step up unit. Move this thing around here. All right, so let's back over here. All right, so we'll pull off the one nut and the other lock washer that should be behind it. Careful not to drop it. Can pull it out a little bit. And we still got tight bundle of wires here, but we can tweak these around and get a little bit more room to access the screws for the, uh, the coil stops and get everything taken apart. All right, so the mechanism is a little different on these. There's no um, spring-loaded lever here for the release. So it's a step up, step down type of arrangement. This is step up, and then when this coil goes, it steps down one unit instead of all the way resetting to zero. And this thing works so good because there's no longer those fingers on the back. So, But it's... this machine uh, I feel pretty lucky. It's only been used in one and two player for most of its life and uh, really hardly anywhere. This is the fifth position and there's there's nowhere at all on this thing. So what do I want to do next? Things to note are we've got a ground wire up here. It's very important that this gets back on. You get some really weird issues if that's not on there. So yeah. We'll pull off the coil. We'll pull off the coils. And again, this is my uh, Wheeler brand of bits and screwdriver handle, which have a lot of different flatheads on it, which is great because you can get just the perfect one. So this one's giving me the most tension here. Coil stop, just like this one, of course. And pull that off. I get really short screws with a lock washer built onto the screw. Loosen it a couple turns here. Really kind of awkward. So here's the Here's the screw. It is just so tiny, so short. Just basically, as long as it needs to be, no longer. Okay, here's our second one. Can pull that off. Let this droop down a little bit. Now, 
these coils are a little different than the ones that were on the score wheels. This back spacer here is not falling off, so my coil is not in danger of unwinding. So I'm just letting them kind of hang loose. And here's the coil stop. It's pretty much brand new. Hardly been hit. Certainly reusable, but uh, I will take the nicest coil stops and I'll put those in player one, the next nicest in player two, etc., etc. Here's our plunger. Again, let's look at that. Like, no use, no wear on it whatsoever. It's hardly hit, the, hit that coil stop at all. Okay, so now we got a little bit more room. What's the next one that's holding us in? All right, this coil right here. Since this is on the top, we'll pull off the wear. The interesting thing about this screw is that there is no lock washer on this screw. Why is that? Well, because the lock washer is built into this terminal right here. It's got serrated edges on it, so this screw, short screw, does not have a lock washer on it. That's the way to differentiate it. And I was in error earlier when I said there's two large coils. There's a small coil for the step down because it's just unwinding the spring, a larger coil for the step up because it has to overcome the spring. Okay, hold those screws while I pull off this coil stop. And again, like new. It's always nice to see that. Okay, we'll carefully pull this off. Do a little test here. Yeah, that, that piece is not going anywhere, so I'll just let her lay. Okay. Now we can pull everything else off. Pretty easy, really. And again, well, just look at, let's look at that. Just no, a little bit of a ridge there, but boy, just hardly anywhere at all because it hasn't been used. All right, so we'll pull that spring off. What's kind of neat about these units is the spring is held up top here and this pin will keep it from ripping itself off when I let it go. So I just bend this a little bit out. There's a notch in this pin that it's on. And there. There's still tension on the spring, but it has been uh, released here. I mean, the, the tension's there, but this wheel will turn. And these two springs... Um, Let's see here, we'll unwind these suckers. I'm just wrapped around here. I believe these two springs are the same. They feel they feel real similar. They're the same length when they're not extended. And we've got the other spring here. And this piece slides off. We got this piece here that slides off. The last piece to take off is this guy. And then this piece comes out of here. And for those playing at home, we got about three turns of tension on all these, is what I've found. So there's one, two, three, and then just a little bit there. Now to take it off the rest of the way, fold over your pin there, and this slides out like that. Pin comes off, this comes out, ready for cleaning. And then the last part. And here's a little bit of insulation that the rodents left over. 
Put that in the garbage. Turn, carefully turn this guy around. And take those screws off and we're done. Again, these are very short screws. It's a screw, built-on lock washer, and a flat washer. Very short, comes off really quick. And this is what pivots on for your adjustment. That's how you do your adjustment here. So I just kind of rotate it, pull the plate away, the way it comes, and there's our plate for number five. And again, you never really want to adjust this unless there's an issue. And just to show you, we've got a little bit of excess lube up on top here, but otherwise this thing looks really good. You want to get rid of all this extra lube. I'll probably clean these by hand because I don't want to ruin the labels. But that really scuzzy one, that one's going in the, in the ultrasonic cleaner for sure. All right, pull the camera back here. Wrap it up. Disassembly is done. Get this out of my way here. Here are all the parts from the other ones, not the ones we took <laughs> took off today because I didn't want to. This thing's pretty full. Don't need to be losing stuff. But uh, yeah, these are all going to be cleaned the ultrasonic cleaner. I am going to have to be careful with these though because they've got that yellow mark. I'll either have to note which one it is or whatnot. Um, probably just clean these by hand. Just a little polish up. And uh, for those of you who are wondering how I clean these uh, back plates here, like this guy. Let's twirl this thing around or this one or something. Uh, the, the riveted side, I use Brasso. And then I uh, clean it real good with Brasso, get it nice and shiny. And then what I do is I take rubbing alcohol and get rid of all the Brasso, very important. And then uh, put some lubrication on there, just a small amount. Okay. We'll get these cleaned up, and then uh, we'll reassemble it, and I'll show you how it's supposed to work. All right. Got everything assembled. Just going to show you some basic operations so you understand how it's supposed to work. Basically, it's supposed to be quick and snappy. The bottom lever here uh, increases the tension on the wheel. And from our viewpoint, it goes clockwise here, so we'll just uh, move it four spaces. Everything's nice and snappy and clicky. And then this right here um, brings it back, for this step, it brings it back one step. And just everything just works perfectly. Uh, smooth operation, uh, nothing sluggish. I'm gonna move the camera here and we will take a look at the back side. And I'll just do the same four um, ups and we'll do the four downs and you see what it looks like from the back side. Okay, here we are on the back side. Just move it down for. And we also have our yellow mark on this leaf right here. And there is the mark from the factory there. All the rivets have been cleaned. A light amount of lubrication has been put on them. And uh, this stepper is good to go. And of course, all the other ones operate just as well and this will provide proper um, spare strike operation and the reason why this uh, shuffle has so many contacts on these units is because it's used for the different bonus games and whatnot they really made uh, good use of these for multiple purposes I'm just going to add this stepper in. this is the step up and reset unit the extra shots from the video before this I didn't really get a chance or should say I didn't film the completed version of it how nice and how this is supposed to work as well it's the same type of thing except when I hit the reset coil it's gonna go all the way back so I'll increment it four steps and then I'll hit it once and then it just snaps back real quick and I, I have the same amount of turns on it uh, we'll just go more steps okay this one only goes up four so when I hit it 
snaps all the way back quickly. And a real good test of these is if you can move them one step and it snaps back just as quick. There's two steps. So this unit is working great. Uh, it'll last for quite a long time as long as I keep proper lubrication on there. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos and playlists and also check us out on Facebook.